Testing, testing. Okay, and I pull this down. I'm pulling my mask down to welcome. Good morning, and welcome to online worship here at All Saints Episcopal Church in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, in this third Sunday of Lent. It is our hope that you are finding the presence of our Lord encouraging and comforting in these March days. And I invite you to join Claudia Bassett on the flute, myself on the keyboard, as we enter a spirit of worship, listening to that timeless hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
holy God, creator of heaven and earth. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. us. Holy and mighty redeemer of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Holy immortal one, sanctifier of the faithful. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Holy blessed and glorious Trinity, one God. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all evil intent. Savior, Savior deliver, deliver us. us. From sloth, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws. Savior, Savior deliver, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from deceits of the world, flesh, and the devil. Savior, Savior deliver, deliver us. From famine and disaster, from violence, murder, and dying unprepared. Savior, Savior deliver, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of our death, and at the day of judgment. Savior, Savior deliver, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation. Savior, Savior deliver us. us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, by the preaching of your reign. Savior, Savior deliver, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial. Savior, Savior deliver, deliver us. us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Savior, Savior deliver, deliver us. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins. And grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your word. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy, holy immortal one, one, have mercy on us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, you know, know that we have, have no power in ourselves, in ourselves to, help to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the inequity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, and you shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day 
and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the the firmament shows shows his handiwork. handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and and one one night night imparts imparts knowledge to another. another. Although they have no words or language, and and their their voices voices are are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and and their their message message to the the ends of the the world. world. In the deep he has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes comes forth forth like a bridegroom out of his his chamber. chamber. It It rejoices rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing Nothing is hidden hidden from from its its burning burning heat. heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony testimony of the the Lord Lord is sure and and gives wisdom wisdom to the the innocent. innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey than honey honey in the comb. comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and And in in keeping keeping them them there is great great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then Then shall I be whole and sound, and and innocent innocent of a great great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O O Lord, Lord, my strength strength and my Redeemer. Redeemer. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle, 
He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the dove, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. third covenant in this year's Lenten readings is the central one of Israel's history, the gift of the law to those God freed from slavery. The gift of the law is that God teaches how to live in community, and the gift of the law where life flows from God and flourishes when based on honesty, trust, respect, fidelity for life, for family, and for property. The commandments begin with the statement that because God alone has freed us from the powers that oppress us, we are to let nothing else claim first place in our lives. And when we let things other than God take first place, when we and religion itself are commercialized and corrupted, Jesus sees our selfish sin and it disturbs him greatly. He attacks the sin with righteous anger, turning over tables and driving profiteers out of the temple. And in doing this, he is defending the worship of God alone and rejecting the ways of consumerism and selfishness that so easily and readily become our gods. When challenged, Jesus responds mysteriously with the first prediction of his own death and resurrection. And amid a seemingly stable religious center in the temple, Jesus suggests that the center itself has changed. And in this time of worldwide crisis, we have experienced our stable religious center of gathering face to face for worship each week as the body of Christ. We have that center changed during this time. And while we cannot be in person together, while we experience this holy discomfort, we can center ourselves in the very Word of God. We can hold one another in prayer. Today's readings remind us that the Ten Commandments ground our baptismal call as centered first in God's liberating love. And then we strive to live out justice and mercy in our homes, in our lives, and in our communities. I've been thinking a lot about the law of Moses this week, the gift of these commandments, and the tension between rules and laws, what is good, right, and salutary. In other words, what is best or beneficial for us, for us and for all creation. What is that way of love? What is the way of Jesus, the one we follow? The Jesus who is about love and healing and goodness, about making the world a better place through including and serving others, is also the Jesus who gets he gets cranky, downright upset, and exhibits righteous anger. And that anger 
is something we don't always know what to do with. Well, we should be on guard for too much anger in our lives, in our communities, in our countries. God knows it can consume us, body, mind, and soul. We don't have to look very far but back to January 6th and the capital of this nation to see that play out. But we should also be on guard for being too nice. You see, the body of Christ gathered as the church too often ignores the peril of not being angry enough. Not standing up for or fighting for the displaced and the despised or the forgotten. We too often suppress doing anything about our righteous indignation for fear that we get angry in public. For fear that we might lose control. And while we try to move on in our discomfort, Another black man is killed by the police. Another family faces eviction during this pandemic. Another person without access to technology fails to get a vaccination appointment. Another Central American child is deported. And another climate change event devastates. Another protest is dismissed as being too radical. And in the midst of all of this, we wonder, I wonder, at what point are strongly worded letters and calls and emails to our elected representatives not enough? At what point does our dismissing and ignoring righteous anger shift from polite niceness to selfish sin? What is it doing to our very souls as we politely tolerate so much injustice and wrong all around us? We wonder and we wrestle and we look to the one who saves. The one who in turning over tables and making and cracking a whip like a madman is a comfort, is an inspiration is a bringer of justice and hope and freedom. Beloveds, we need not be afraid or embarrassed by the depth or the breadth of our anger at injustice and oppression. There is forgiveness and hope in harnessing the roaring rage of righteous anger to burn away injustice and oppression. If only... Only we're brave enough to act on it. Jesus acts. Jesus creates holy discomfort and good trouble. Turning over tables, driving out the sin that de-centers and corrupts. And when that sin is driven out, when that selfishness is decentered and that corruption is called out, there is repentance. Turning away from sin is the first step, but not sinning doesn't save us. Only turning to and centering ourselves and our lives on Jesus is the solution. During Jesus' time, the people flocking to the temple for religious feasts and festivals came from long distances, and their home currency couldn't work in Jerusalem. And so they had to change their money in order to buy animals and birds to give to God, to sacrifice to God. And while we don't have to do this, while we are not expected to give animals and sacrifice to God in that way, we do have a tendency sometimes to turn religion into a consumeristic exchange. Or worse, a negotiation with God. I'll give to you, God. 
if you do this for me. I'll go to church if you bless me the rest of the week. We do this like God is some kind of holy vending machine. And sometimes we even try to profit at others' religious experience. Beloveds, Jesus the Christ puts an end to all of that through the cross. Through the cross that looks like foolishness to the rest of the world. But it is the wisdom and it is the power of God. And it ends, it ends all of our sinful exchanges and divine negotiations. You see, the risen Christ is our temple. The very place where we meet God in the power of the Holy Spirit. And what happens in that temple that is Christ is that God gives to us. God gives to us so that we may then turn and give and share with others. When we were baptized children of God, the Ten Commandments were given to us as part of our gift. They are the bedrock, the foundation of our lives of faith. Especially when we fold them in, when we reflect and stand on them each and every day. They're a reflection of God's abundant mercy. So that rather than coveting someone else's thing, we engage in giving to others. Rather than lying about someone else, we pray for them. Rather than misusing someone else, we fast from self-indulgence. And rather than seeing the law as commandments of restriction, we see how through Jesus and the cross, they revive, they instruct, they enlighten, and they set us free. They set us free. My prayer is that you know that freedom. And that you center your lives in God's liberating love. May it be so.
We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of all, of all that, that is seen and unseen. We, we believe, believe in one Lord, Lord, Jesus Christ, the, the only Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God light from light, light true God, God from true God, God begotten, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this third Sunday in Lent, let our prayer reflect the guidance of the Ten Commandments. We respond to each petition with the words, Grant us your wisdom, O God. O God, our lawgiver, our temple, our wisdom, form your church to worship you alone. As you blessed Gregory the Great, so bless our bishops, Michael and Rob, for their ministry in church and world. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant, Grant us your wisdom, wisdom O God. God. Protect all who call upon the power of your name as you bless the martyr Perpetua and her companions. So bless all the baptized who suffer for their faith. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant, Grant us, us your, your wisdom, wisdom God. God. Even during this pandemic, connect us in diverse ways to our worshiping communities and give to all persons regular rest from their work. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant, Grant us, us your, your wisdom, wisdom, O God. God. Bless with wisdom all parents and any who are granted authority over others and give to the children the will to honor those who care for them. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant, Grant us, us your, your wisdom, wisdom, O God. God. Keep the nations of the earth from engaging in war, bloodshed, and torture, and help people of all ages to resist the lure of violence. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant, Grant us, us your, your wisdom, wisdom O oh God. God. Uphold marriages and all commitments of care, and defend all persons, especially children, from sexual abuse. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant, Grant us, us your, your wisdom, wisdom O oh God. God. Guard your earth, its animals, and its plant life from all who would take for themselves more than they need. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant, Grant us your, your wisdom, wisdom, O God. God. Train the diverse peoples of our nation to respect one another. As you blessed Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, so bless all who work to end discrimination and the oppression of the vulnerable. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant us your wisdom, O oh God. Use our bounty to meet the needs of others, those who are homeless or hungry, and hear our prayers for all who are sick or suffering, especially all afflicted with the coronavirus and all we name here before you. You are our strength and our redeemer. 
Grant us your wisdom, O God. Teach us how to pray also for ourselves. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant, Grant us, us your, your wisdom, wisdom, O God. Receive our thanks for all who have died in the faith and bring us all at the end into the fullness of your life. You are our strength and our redeemer. Grant, Grant us, us your wisdom, wisdom O God. God. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful and gracious God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. A few brief announcements. Uh, this Tuesday, we begin again Wolfboro Reads. Our March read is Bishop Michael Curry's book, Love is the Way, Finding Hope During Difficult Times. We gather at 4 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. Zoom link information is found in your e-news and on the monthly calendar mailed to your home. Our Lenten prayer service is at noon on Wednesday. We live stream on Wednesdays at noon, and then that is available on Facebook or our YouTube channel later in the day. So please join us Wednesdays at noon or Wednesday evenings at your convenience. Uh, coffee hour follows worship at 10 o'clock this morning. We invite you to, uh, to come online via Zoom. Again, those links are in the uh, Friday e-news and in the monthly calendar. Join us for some conversation uh, this morning. And our offering that we will take can be done electronically through our website, wolfsaints.com. It can be done through your banking institution or by dropping a check in the mail or here at church. Let us present the offerings of our life and our labor to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light, inaccessible from before time and forever. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power Lord, and might, heaven, heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in, in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, you we, we give, give thanks, thanks to you, you and, and we, we pray, pray to you, you Lord, Lord our God. God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance, all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant Lamb us peace. There is a long-standing practice in the Episcopal Church to offer a means for people to receive Holy Communion spiritually when it cannot be received physically. I invite you to pray with me. My Jesus. My Jesus. I believe, I believe that, that you are truly present in the, in the blessed, blessed sacrament of the, of the altar. altar. I, I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray together. Tender, Tender and, and merciful one, at your feast you fed us who brought nothing, turning our emptiness into joy. Filled with your abundant grace, send us now to be ministers of reconciliation, mending broken hearts, working for justice, and striving for peace among all people. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look mercifully on this, your family, almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.